So I love the idea of a fireplace in our bedroom. For me, this one is a little intense. Like, it's a lot. It's, um, yeah, just a little in your face. But I don't think that we, for like, initially, I don't think we're going to be doing anything with this. Eventually, I like imagine something a little bit more slim, understated, but for now, I think there are some things that we could do to just like give it a make under. Namely, these. Um, interesting placement, if you ask me. Um, so I just want to take these down and I think that an easy way to modernize a fireplace um, is go with like a slimmer or no mantle. Either a slim mantle or no mantle. And so we're going to take this mantle off and I don't know what we're going to find underneath it, but time will tell. Typically how these are installed is there are rods or beams or something that come out of the actual wall or uh, the fireplace, whatever. Um, and then this is just a unit that slips over top of it and then gets secured in somehow. Um, it's hard to tell, and that's how it's made. It's supposed to be hard to tell how it's uh, connected there. Um, but sometimes uh, what I do is I take my flashlight and you're looking for just a very slight difference in the finish and it's often just like a, a little round circle for like a screw or something like that that they have wood filled and then they've treated it they've like gone over and they've finished it to match and so i'm just going to look at the whole surface and see if i can find that and if not we'll try some other things so you're looking at the wood grain just examining it very closely to find the spot where the grain changes. Sometimes these things will actually be built in place. Those are a bit more of a pain. This, this easily could have because they like cut the bottom of this like so close to each rock. I mean, it's super well done. Yeah. It looks like this bottom piece yeah. was added afterwards and then pin nailed up. Uh huh. And so. Yeah, I can see that too. I'm gonna get a. I'm just gonna finish looking at everything, make sure that's what we're thinking and it happened. So I can see along the crack here um, that this is one piece that was pin nailed on. So we're going to try and pry this apart. This is a nice mantle, even though it's not our style. And so we want to keep it intact as best we can because we'll probably just end up donating it um, to our local restore or other secondhand place where somebody else can get, use, uh, get a good use out of it. And so we just want to be as gentle as we can while hammering onto something. Uh, just be careful. <clears throat> it is pulling apart. Let's see, that's just so blunt. <clears throat> it might be glued, and so this thing might be just coming apart. It's not better way to do this, since I have this lip here, I went and got a spare block of wood. And we'll try and get that to separate. It's not going anywhere. Well, that worked. We can 
now see how it's connected. We've got bolts that are sticking out. Um, I'll just use a wrench and um, there are some pliers or something. Take those off and we can slide it off and decide what to do about the big giant bolts that are sticking straight out. Minor. It's a minor problem. It's hard to dress those up. I think it's so funny how on TV you see people like bashing cabinets apart or bashing this mantle up and it's like if you could just take a minute to just figure out how it was installed it'll all come off like so much easier like this is going to come off a lot cleaner and it can be reused and it can be reused go now but I'll just This guy was just kind of sitting in there so I can see what kind of uh, anchors they used. These are really great anchors um, because they are really difficult to get out, which is their purpose. And so uh, there's not a lot of moving. Um, but they're all in the grout lines. And so what I may need to do is get an angle grinder and cut them off here and then we can grout or, you know, mortar. We can just mix up a little bit of mortar and kind of cover them for the time being. I'm not convinced that that's the right move. So I'll think about it a little bit longer. Um, we'll see what we end up doing. I'm stalling by doing this while I think about <laughs> what to do about those. <laughs> Where this is in the mortar, I'm just kind of hitting this a little bit to try and break up uh, the mortar that's around it and then it's it's moving now so I think that might be how I end up getting these out of here. If it were directly into the stone I'd probably just grind it down because um, I wouldn't want to crack the stone or have it fall off. But I think doing it this way we should be all right but I'm I'm being as careful as I can. Oh. Yeah, buddy. That's how we're gonna do it. Um, so those are out now. We have the holes in the um, in the mortar in between the stone. Um, if this were going to stay, I would mix up some mortar and fill those holes in. I probably won't worry about it since this is kind of a phase one and you really don't notice it um, when you're standing back and looking at the whole thing. But what you do notice now is this line of um, uh, caulk that they put on the top of the um, mantle. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through, pull off the parts that I can that will come off easily. Once I get that off um, as much as I can, I'll take a Scotch-Brite pad or something and just kind of go over this lightly and that'll bring it uh, off a little bit more and make it less of a defined line across there so that it will blend more. You can see there's some of this uh, shading on some of the stone. When I do rub this with a Scotch-Brite pad, I want to make sure that I'm not creating another line in that by rubbing that away. So sometimes it's better to just not 
just to leave this caulk here in those parts, but get it off everywhere else you can, just so it's not a full line all the way across. <clears throat> I'm gonna try this uh, little wire brush. Right now it just has hot water in it. I'm not gonna add any other soap or anything because I don't want to discolor the stone. Um, and we'll just try that and see if it loosens it up. This is all cleaned off and I mean right now you can see a line because the stone's wet and the water absorbed in but over here this is where I started um, so right here you can see that it's all dried up there's no lines or anything so that's how it's going to look once all the rest of it dries up and that will be perfect now I'm going to take these guys down These used to be can lights. Actually, I mean, they are can lights, um, but they just got this kit in here that turns it into a hanging light. And so we may just want to put a can light up in there and call it good. I was going to cap it, but it's already got everything it needs to just be a can light. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that quite yet. <clears throat> the unfortunate thing is, is the inside parts of the light that I need um, in order to remount the uh, bulb, um, they're not there and I'm pretty sure they've probably been tossed out long before now. So. I'll look around in the garage a little bit. There really wasn't anything in there, and so I probably won't find it. And then I'll probably have to run to the store, to Lowe's, and see what I can find to turn this back into a recessed light. Or just cap it, if that's what we want to do. But I think for now, it probably makes sense to make it a recessed light. Hey, are you not going? I like the fireplace now. <laughs> well, that's good. It's not as like in your face anymore. Yeah. I think at the least it's a good. Oh, a good phase transition. One. Yeah. Yep. Good phase one. It's a great phase one. Let's bring on the paint. All right. Oh, so, to be continued. 